I'm going to show you how I set up a custom scoreboard in Wirecast. I'm using Wirecast 7, but this could be done in prior versions as well as uh, Wirecast 8. So the first thing is I want to design my scoreboard. So I did it in Photoshop. Uh, this is my this is my scoreboard design. I set it up. I filled it in with a bunch of text so I could kind of see what it's going to look like. Um, and once I'm ready, I just hide the text. And what I'm going to do is save this out. And one of the tricks that I'm doing um, is is these custom logos. And for us, uh, everything I do is for Willamette and most of our opponents are, are conference schools and there's eight, eight other conference schools and so I will just create a version of these for each one of our conference schools. Oh, and you know you can see I can just change the logos I've just got it dumped in here and so what I will do is I will change the logo and save out uh, a transparent PNG for each version of these and I have this this little black box here to provide some additional text. So what I'm actually going to do is save two versions of each one. Um, so I'm going to be actually working with the George Fox one. So I will save this as George Fox and then I will hide that little bottom piece and save that as George Fox 2. Um, and then once I'm done you will have let's You will have all of these little scoreboards, one for each possibility. And once I'm done with that, then what I need to do is get that into Wirecast. So to get it into Wirecast, what I'm going to do is go into your C drive and program files, and then Telestream, Wirecast. EVA underscore plugins, sources, scoreboard, and now all the configurations are done in this scoreboard underscore templates file. And all your images go in your images folder. And so if I open this, you can see here are all the ones that I, my custom ones. And these are the ones that you may recognize from the default Wirecast scoreboards. But to actually get it to show up in the program, I need to edit this scoreboard underscore templates.xml. I'm going to use Sublime Text, but it's just a text file. You can edit it with whatever you want. So let's scroll down here. So this is what you would see when you open it by default. And you can see here is the metal pipe. This is all the information for the metal pipe scoreboard. And so let's just dissect this a little bit. Your group name is basically your scoreboard group. And in Wirecast, that is this right here. This is what the group is. You can see there's metal pipe. Type, veil template, that is going to stay the same for everything. Name is basically the subgroup that you're going to use. So you can see here under the metal pipe, there's basic, top, bottom top and bottom and those should probably sound familiar. Unique ID is just a, literally a unique uh, ID for for each one of these. You can see each one of them have a have a unique unique ID. Input count is how many inputs it's using and width and height is uh, what the width and height of your uh, image file is. And then here we have image. The URL this is just the name of the image file that you saved. So let's scroll up to the top and look at these ones that I did. So we start here. I created Willamette. That's my group. I named this one George Fox. I gave it a unique ID. It's got four inputs and it's 1200 by 125. The URL, which is basically the file name, is georgefox.png. And this is where the default location is. So each one of these text lines indicates where a text box will be located. So here's your first one. 
and these are your rectangle or coordinates. And basically, it's, it's, this is your top left, and this is your bottom right. And so, um, basically what, what I need to do is I need to kind of guess where those will be um, and save the file, import it into Wirecast, and test it and see how it works. And if it's not right, I need to close Wirecast, open it, change them, modify them to what I think it should be, save again, bring it back into Wirecast. So this could take a little bit of futzing to get it to work correctly. Um, but for example, you know, you can see on this one, these are all 10 and 75. Basically that means the top is 10 and the bottom is 75. Because on this scoreboard, because they're all linear, all the top will have the same values. So the top of these, the top of each one of these text fields is the same. And the bottom of each one of those text fields is the same. So that kind of simplifies it a little bit. Um, if it was stacked, your left and right would be, would be similar. Um, and so text ID basically determines which input in Wirecast that is defining. So in Wirecast you have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then one, two, three, four, uh, and I, this one I don't have five, I have just six. So this is the scoreboard without the box, because it only has five, and then with the box would give it six. And as you can see down here, this is my second one. Uh, it has six fields. And you can see in this one, so again, Willamette is the group. Bell template stays the same. This is George Fox 2, because it's the same as, basically it's, it's got the George Fox logo, but 2 means that it has the rectangle at the bottom. I give it a unique ID. Everything there stays the same. George Fox 2.png is the name of the file. All this stuff stays the same. This one stays the same. I'm just adding this, this line right here, which will be that bottom box. And so you save that, save that file. It needs to be this file right here. You dump your files in there, and then you start up Wirecast. And when you do that, you'll see you'll have your options right here. And you can see now I have an additional option at the top called Willamette. And under Willamette, I have all of these different options. There's my George Fox 2. It gives me that little banner at the below. I can switch to a different school. I can go to Lewis and Clark, I go to Linfield. You can see that each one I do changes, changes the logo. And each one of them has a 2, which adds that box below. And so that's basically it. It's, uh, it's not terribly complicated, but it does take a little bit of futz in to make sure uh, that your boxes are aligned correctly. And if they're not, what will happen is, is that these, these text fields, as you type them in, will just not appear in the right place. And you just need to adjust them to put them, put them back where they go. So that is, that is how I do it, and uh, I hope that uh, that helped you out.